And when the hurricane season ends, seas that are thousands of kilometers away may also be affected. When there's a perfect storm between wind, currents, and tides, the waves striking coastal areas can have devastating consequences for people, property, and the environment. They can also result in significant coastal erosion. Until recently, a handful of satellites supplied information on oceanic waves using altimeters or radars but they didn't allow for a detailed image to be built up. Nor did they provide precise information about the relationship between the waves and the currents. Talia de Brest, hello. Yes, it's the Talia leaving Brest for a mission on the Iroise Sea. 12 people on board, three meter draft, requesting your okay. In Brittany, Two planes belonging to Meteo France and the CNRS and one ship from the French oceanographic feed, the Talia, have been brought in to help better quantify these ocean phenomena. Fabrice Ardouin is the director of this operation and works out of the Laboratory for Ocean Physics and Satellite Remote Sensing in Brest. His work on developing a way to measure waves on a large scale has resulted in the newly created SKIM project. We are in the process of developing a new satellite that will measure currents and waves. It uses a Doppler radar, and it's the same principle as when the police use radars to carry out speed controls. But instead of measuring the speed of cars, we're measuring the speed of the surface. And this visible surface speed provides us with information about currents and waves. Using the Doppler effect, we hope that we'll be able to do it by satellite soon. Before launching a satellite equipped with this radar, its effectiveness has to be proven. The idea is to install it on a plane and compare the measurements taken from the air with those taken by the Talia on the sea. We're leaving in five or 10 minutes. We'll be in the offshore zone for one hour and then we'll head for Wisson to synchronize with the buoys. They're in position to deploy at midday as planned. We'll continue with the second one at 20 meters. Pierre, let me know when you're ready. I'm ready, Pierre. I'm putting number 10 in the water. The yellow buoys we just placed in the water will move up and down with the waves, and we will measure their movement. The same way as when you move your phone and it measures the acceleration. It's the same. We have a system that measures the acceleration in the buoy, and using that, we can calculate the height, direction, and period of the waves. Today it's fairly calm, but the swell is quite long, so we'll be able to check that we can measure even the smallest amplitude. We'll check that the quality of the measurements is sufficient, and that will give us better readings when using the plane. Having a reliable measurement of ocean currents is key, and until now, we haven't had any satellites taking such measurements on a global level, like SkimCan. We've already collected a lot of data that we've never had access to before. They are also experts, they have a lot of confidence, and it's going very well, so I have a lot of confidence in them as well. <laughs> Thanks to SKIM, Fabrice and his team will be able to measure not just waves, but also currents that are invisible to the naked eye. On a planetary scale, this promises to be a colossal task. Far from Brest, in the Icelandic Sea, the researchers from the Alliance are also monitoring ocean currents. 
Canada. You go to there, okay. and we'll see if we can do a CTD okay, there. Okay, so now, now we are crossing here, so we can actually eat directly. You to can this actually one. go okay. head to that okay, one right we'll there. Wait. Super. They are trying to understand the weather disturbances that affect Europe and the USA, such as cold snaps, summer heat waves, and floods. They've been gathering data in the sea and in the sky for almost two months now. And their efforts have been rewarded. They've just proved the variations in a current we had no idea existed until a few years ago. The Northern Icelandic jet stream. So one of the oceanographic goals is to try and trace the source of that dense water, whether it's coming from the Iceland Sea, whether it's coming from the Greenland Sea. So it's a bit of a puzzle, and it's, it's kind of trying to trace back where that water is coming from. Until now, in terms of the general circulation of the oceans, scientists had only identified one single cold current in the Denmark Strait the current that runs along the eastern coast of Greenland. Using temperature, salinity, and speed data gathered by the ship, they've been able to accurately map the path of the northern Icelandic jet stream, a new undersea river. Today, scientists are putting forward the hypothesis that the warming of the Arctic is slowing the flow of this current which in turn is altering the general circulation in the oceans. These modifications to ocean flows combined with changing air currents might help explain the recurrence of extensive cold periods during winter time and heat waves in the summer. Traveling to the Arctic, to deserts, or to the middle of the oceans, crossing through our atmosphere, gaining a better understanding of clouds, lightning, waves, and currents. The Earth system is not a simple thing to evaluate. More than any other science, meteorology has now become a collaborative affair across the world because weather events do not respect borders. Every two years, representatives from all 22 EU member states come together. Their goal is simple, to anticipate risk and ensure the security of populations. In the scientific world in general, there is a great deal of cooperation. And in meteorology, there is perhaps even more than elsewhere. We collaborate a great deal with our member states, their meteorological services, but also their universities and institutions. We also work with organizations outside Europe, with the USA, with China, and with many others. It's something that really brings together many of our scientific activities on a global scale. <laughs> 